Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the 1972 TR6 behind me. We're working on the wiring and I uh, had to cut the previous episode short. So now here we've made a little bit more progress already, but I'm going to show it to you now. So let me just make a little bit of a recap of what has been done in the last video. We attempted to replace the wiring harness with a brand new one, but it turned out it's for a different year, so it doesn't match the switches, the gauges, and anything on the dust. So we decided that we were gonna deal with the old one. So we wanted to replace the wiring harness because the original one was bodged completely by, I guess, many owners previously. There were lots of wires added replacing original wires or modifying the schematic completely so all the wrapping from the harness was removed and all the wire was on all the wires were tangled into a big bow so what we did was we removed lots of wires already that were not needed brought everything back to original all the original color wires are running now to all the gauges and everywhere on the dash it's still like spaghetti but everything is connected there's no hanging wires except here for the rear harness we still have to work on this a little bit but like I said everything is connected properly and in this video we're gonna test everything so we're gonna plug it in for a first time and we're gonna see what's gonna happen so enjoy so what we're gonna do is, for now, I don't have any fuses, so I'm just gonna connect the ground and that's gonna power up this brown circuit because the brown circuit apparently is the one that is not fused. I don't know why that is, but look at this. From the battery, it goes to the starter, from the starter, it goes to the ammeter, from there to the alternator. So actually, this is how you charge the battery. So through the ammeter, you have power to the ignition switch and from the ignition switch, it goes to the, to the light switch. So from here, you have the marker lights that go here through a fuse and now all the marker lights are fused. But from here, going to the high beam, low beam or dimmer to the dimmer switch or dip switch, whatever you want to call it, from here, you split into high beam or low beam but all this is not fused. So without the fuses, we're gonna have this part here powered. So I wanna connect the battery very carefully and make sure that there's no short anywhere. So we're gonna go really easy. And there, okay. Hmm. How come there was a spark for a second? Hmm, let me think. There was a spark for a second and then there wasn't. Dun, dun, dun. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, there is now. Okay. It's almost like there is a condenser somewhere, but here everything is disconnected. I forgot to mention the coil is disconnected. The electronic ignition is disconnected. We're gonna deal with that later. This is the ignition wire, even though it needs to be white, but somebody turned it into a blue and that was connected to the positive of the coil. We're gonna deal with that later. I just wanna make sure that everything under the dash works. But look at that. It sparks like crazy initially and then not anymore. Huh, okay, we have to investigate that. Okay, I'm gonna investigate. How am I gonna investigate is I'm gonna start disconnecting things from here and we'll see when it's gonna stop sparking here's our co-port <laughs> we have an amplifier that i forgot about okay i meant to disconnect everything that is aftermarket like the stereo is disconnected but the amplifier is still connected here so i'm just gonna undo its fuse because that's what happens it has capacitors inside that as soon as you connect it they charge it doesn't draw power when it is disconnected supposedly it has a blue wire that goes to behind the stereo 
when that blue wire is powered by the stereo then the amplifier turns on so it shouldn't drain but anyways we're gonna disconnect it now so it doesn't affect our tests here okay this is now disconnected the fuse and now let's test it again uh -huh. that's better i knew it felt like a capacitor or a condenser as we call it in europe in bulgaria anyway now our brown circuit should be powered which is here to the fuse and i'm gonna start testing it i'm gonna see if i have power everywhere for example to the switch to the ignition light etc etc and if that passes the test we're gonna see if we have low beam high beam even though here it is a big mess but we can always check if we have power to the dim switch dim switch or dip switch we're gonna see if we have power to here and even if the lights don't work we're gonna know that we're gonna have to deal with this or in the boot but at least we will know that under the dash we connected everything properly we're gonna see if the high beam indicator works on the dash etc etc and then if that works then we're gonna put one fuse for example the red one and we're gonna see if that part of the circuit works and then we're gonna you know what i mean we're gonna add the fuses one by one and we're gonna keep working our way to make sure that everything works all right so far so good we have power here to the brown circuit so this is where the brown wire is and we have power here we have power to the ignition switch right here to the brown wire we have 12.3 volts we also have power to the lights because look if i pull the stalk towards me there you go you can see the headlights over there coming on right and if we go one click that's the marker lights and we know that we don't have the fuse yet but if we turn completely on now we have headlights and we should have also let me push I'm gonna do the dimmer switch here. There you go, we have high beam and low beam. I don't know which one is high, which is low, yeah. So this part of the circuit is okay. We, maybe we should connect or maybe, no, later we're gonna do the back. We're gonna leave the rear harness for now alone. I just wanna make sure that everything in the front here works. So I think now we can put maybe the red fuse for the red circuit so we can see if the dash lights are gonna work and the marker lights okay we have one fuse in and the marker lights i turned so i went just one click down here and now the marker lights work all of them surprisingly in the front even though it's a mess with the wiring, but we're gonna clean that up too. So the rear ones don't work yet because they are not connected. Like I said, we're gonna deal with that later. This should work. I don't see these working. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because this is for the rear stat. So the dimmer for the light so this needs to be shortened the real stat is still on the dash so i'm gonna shorten this to make sure that these work as well all right so this is shortened and now oh now they work i can i can actually pull them out to see better but yeah it's hard to see in the it's too bright outside but now they work here you can see through the hole yeah. Okay, this one is green. This one is blue. So that's how the gauges are. This one is white. That's interesting. Huh. So all the gauges are different. I have to be careful with this because these are live. Now for these lights to work, these are only powered, so they need ground. So I need to touch them here. There you go, this one works. <sighs> oh, 
Okay. So dash illuminating and the marker lights work. So I think I'm gonna go through everything myself and I'll tell you only if something doesn't work because I expect everything to work. There might be some short somewhere because I'm not sure why this whole thing, this whole wiring harness was unweaved or whatever we want to call it and all the wires were separated but now that I've been through every single wire I don't see anything shortened every anything like I don't know what happened but for whatever reason they just eliminated lots of the original wiring and run different wires going to different places they changed the whole schematic but now that I put it back to original looks like everything is gonna work but let me not jinx it <laughs> All right, the fuse on the green circuit is now on. And uh, now when I turn the ignition on from here, <laughs> this is my ignition switch, the two lights come on. These are the ignition wire and um, low oil pressure warning light. And I started testing here. So I'm getting power here to the voltage stabilizer and I'm getting 10 point five volts actually on this side which is weird or uh, well now i'm getting less now i'm getting 8.2 volts but this thing is not grounded yet right so it needs to be grounded in order order to work properly um, i'm getting power here to the windshield wiper switch to the green i haven't tested it yet because here I'm not sure that these are in the right uh, configuration, so I'm not gonna try to do that yet. This is the same, I have power here. This is the switch for the windshield washer fluid, but I don't have any signals here or, or the hazards. So this is the first problem that I have to troubleshoot. So I'm just going to go through the schematic now and start chasing the power. I'll see if I have power coming to the turn signal flasher, to the hazard switch. Oh, the hazards won't work because the hazards are on the purple circuit, actually. Let me show you. So the hazards are actually on the purple circuit. So that's why they don't work yet, but we're going to get there. But we have to see if we have power to the third signal flusher unit first. And then from there, it goes to the hazard switch. That's because when you turn the hazards on, it disconnects three and four here and makes sure you can't turn on the hazards and the regular signals at the same time. So that's what the hazard switch does. It's either this circuit is closed or this circuit is closed, but never one and two and three and four. You know what I mean? So we're going to see if we have voltage coming to the flusher first, if we have power to the flusher, we will see if we have power out. If we have power out, we will see if we have power to the hazard switch, we will see if it comes out actually. And then we're gonna go to the turn signal switch and we're gonna go from there. We're just gonna start chasing all this and we will see. And once we make the regular signals work, then we're gonna see if we can make the hazards work, but that's, like I said, another circuit. And I haven't checked the brake lights yet. If they work, we know that they are not connected, but I can check on the connector for the rear harness. If we have power there when I press the brake pedal, we can see if the fan is gonna work. So lots of things on the green circuit because before we get to the purple one. All right, so, I tested it the way I told you from the schematic. I first checked the flasher unit. It has power in, power out. It comes here to the back of the switch. The back of the switch though, I didn't connect properly before because I thought that uh, it was a different schematic here. But anyways, I figured these are the ones that are normally closed when the switch is off, these two. So I hooked them up there and then power came to the wires that go for the the switch here so this these are the three i know it's hard to see now but 
these are the three connections so the green with brown is the one that supplies power to the switch and then the switch supplies power either to the green with red or green with white for the left and right signal however power goes in no power goes out when i flip the switch doesn't matter left or right so the owner was right because he told me that he needs the signal switch replaced and he has one in a box in the back so we're gonna do that and since we are doing that we're gonna also uh, install the overdrive switch because he bought an overdrive switch so it comes here next to the signal switch so we're gonna install them both at the same time okay the switch is out and i might have found the problem here dun, dun, dun. anyway i'm not sure that's the only problem though so i'm not gonna do it normally if i find if i didn't have another switch i was gonna try and fix this one but since there is another switch we're gonna just replace it because all right so this is the new switch with the same color wires and everything this was the escutcheon whatever this is called but now we're not gonna use this we're gonna use this because this also has the overdrive switch on it so that's how it goes actually the overdrive switch just mounts to the plastic and then you put it there and you have an overdrive switch now so let me install these so here the owner also has some switches for the transmission because maybe the transmission doesn't have those for the overdrive with fiber washers for them so he was prepared all right so the two switches are installed and that was a big challenge here this is the biggest challenge to run the wires underneath the steering column with uh, all these wires inside there's no more room in the channel for these wires so i just ran them externally this was held with a zip tie and normally it's held by, by nothing even though it has a hole here for a screw it's normally held by nothing i don't know why and this one has a like a thong here to get clipped somewhere but there's no room to clip it so anyways i'm gonna hold it with a zip tie again eventually but look at the signal light now pam, 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 pam. you can see this one is blinking somewhere there how did this one not work no there you go now it works for the left signal it works slow because i'm assuming that this here is not working yeah we have to see why this is not working probably the mess here the right one is working you can see the right one is working but for the right one this is not working that happens with led when you replace this bulb with led it works for one direction only because it's a diode right and the way it is hooked up here you see it takes power from both circuits when you turn the right signal on for example that shoots power here and then the other side senses ground through the bulb on the other side okay that's why it's not working because the bulb on one side is not connected now i get it if you turn this side on then you have power to this side of the bulb and the other side senses the ground through the other bulb but because now this one is not working that's why it obviously doesn't see ground through this bulb okay that's why it is not working it makes sense now yeah and it's slow because only one bulb is on actually only this bulb <laughs> so the the signals are working properly except the mess over there and we haven't gone to the boot yet because this is disconnected but we're gonna get there the thing is the switch and the flasher are working properly and while we are on the green circuit i told you here on the voltage stabilizer we're getting 12 volt on one side on the other side it was 10 initially then it's showing 8 but it is not grounded so we don't have ground so that's why it's making a mess but whatever voltage shows here shows here too it was 10 initially then it's 8 so we're good for that part of the green circuit we haven't tested these yet because it's not connected the rear harness well i can test this one actually but that's gonna be later for the fuel i can test it i tested the brake light switch i connected that wire that was hanging 
and now on the connector for the rear harness I see power every time I press the brakes. Uh, here the green-ish part of the circuit is tested. We just haven't tested the purple one yet. We're gonna test that later. Uh, and the only thing that we haven't tested yet is the heater fan. So let's see if that's gonna work. The ignition is still on. Where is the switch? Here. Okay. Come on. One-handed. There you go. One speed is working. Uh, I can't pull with one hand. I'll put you down for a second. There you go. Okay. The second speed is working too. Okay, so the green circuit is tested. I'm gonna turn the ignition off now. And we're gonna test the purple circuit. Like I said before, the purple circuit only includes the horns, the glove box light and switch. The door lights are not working. The ignition, see, the ignition key warning circuit and illumination. This is not hooked up. The trunk that is hooked up up to the connector for the rear harness and the last one is the hazards. So let's see if the hazards are gonna work now. Okay, so the fuse is on for the purple circuit. So now we should have horn, hazards and illumination of the glove box. Oh, there you go. The glove box is on <laughs> ah, and it works. Look at that. We, should, we have to make sure that we don't leave that on so we don't drain the battery I actually need to plug in something but i'm more curious to see if the hazards are gonna work nothing so i'm assuming that relay there is not great there was another relay here okay but this is only two prong and we need a three prong what is the third prong for Okay, the third prong is for the light on the dash, but still it should work with the other two. Oh, but that this relay doesn't have a round yet. I have to do that. Here, I forgot about that. This relay, I wanted to put a ground on. So let me do that. Okay, so for the hazards, I determined that this flasher is not working properly. I mean, it should be working properly for the four signals to come on and off, but it is not working for the dust light, and I'll show you why I think that, but also this relay is not working. So let me show you what, how it works. So how it works is when you turn the hazard switch on, you, you send power to W1 on the relay, and since there's ground on the W2, the relay clicks and when it clicks it should connect C2 simultaneously to C1 and C4 and C2 has power through the flasher so the same power that comes to W1 goes also to one side of the flasher and when it is closed it sends power to the light green with pink which goes to C2 on the relay and like I said because we have power here we have ground here the relay clicks and it closes the circuit between C2 with C C1 and C4 and now all the lights work but since they work the flasher unit gets hot uh, it has a bimetallic uh, strip inside that gets hot and it disconnects the circuit and now the relay is still on but there's no power here to this line to C2 so now the lights are off the bimetallic strip cool, cools down and it closes again as soon as it closes it provides power to c2 c4 and c1 are connected to c2 so these come on etc etc the third pin on the flasher unit is for the dash light i don't know why they have a separate wire for the light this light could be just hooked up here as well you know as long as these two work i can make it work or i can get another flasher for there but the problem is that this relay is not working because we have power to W1, we have ground to W2, but the relay does not click 
let me show you yes this is w1 and we have power here so this provides power to the relay and this underneath is w2 where i hooked up this ground from here and now if i touch it yes i have ground so this relay should be clicking right now if i connect it and disconnect it like that should be clicking but it is not clicking this is c1 here and underneath is c4 and they both show me ground now through the bulbs left and right bulb whatever so here though i have power here but this is not connected here and here now it should connect and i have power here because that's coming from the flusher so you can see here this is the no wire it has power here it has power here this is the in this is the out of the flusher this is here the light on the dash but it is not there's no power here and there should be unless it has power when it once it clicks yeah maybe yeah maybe that's what happens it has power once it the thing clicks but now we don't have anything so what if I hook this up directly here I'm just gonna jump the relay there you go now this I heard this clicking and it came on but it doesn't flash so I want to put bigger load here I'm gonna put, put another bulb here I'm gonna take power from here connect it here and I give it ground from here there you go still not flashing should be flashing now so the flasher unit is not working properly it's powering up but it's not flashing so we need a three pin flasher unit okay so we need a five pin relay and a three pin flasher unit to make the hazards work all right, I took apart the relay. I wanted to see if something is seized inside. Oops, if something is seized inside or whatever, but you can see that unfortunately the coil is cooked. So what it's what's supposed to happen, you can see here, these are W1 and W2, and they go to both sides of this little coil, this one and this one. And when the coil is energized, it becomes an electrical magnet and it pulls down this. Once this is pulled down, this is C1 right here. This is sticking out of there, you see? That's the center of the coil. It's not connected to the coil, it's just going through the center of the coil. But when this closes, it transfers the power through these two strips, it transfers the power to C1 and C4 that are here. And the only reason why we have a relay there is so the left circuit and the right circuit for the signals are connected only when the relay is on. So when the relay is on, it shortens, basically shortens the two circuits. So now if you power one side, you also power the other side, right? So this could be easily replaced with two diodes. So if we put a diode between uh, C2 and C4 and another diode between C2 and C1, we don't even need a relay because this wire is going to be connected to the two circuits in the same time, but the two circuits cannot power up each other. So I can actually do that just to test it uh, because I don't have a five pin relay. I have a four pin relay, but it doesn't work the same way because it just connects C2 to C3 or C4 or C1 or something. I don't know what it connects to, but it doesn't connect it to two separate circuits. So I might just do that. I have lots of diodes here. I might just do that so I can uh, continue working here without a relay and be able to test the whole system. Then I can test also the hazard flasher. All right, so I went to the basement to look uh, for a relay because I'm sure somewhere I have two or three relays, but they're all for my Spitfire or GT6. I'm sure 100% that I don't have this 
early relay, which is apparently unobtainable anymore. So I went to the Most Motors website and they have all these relays. So overdrive and horn relay, it's the same. 542170, five, it's obviously a four pin relay. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, one, two, three, four pin relay. So what it does, it, it connects, uh, let me open you here. When you put power and ground to W1 and W2, it connects C1 to C2, that's all it does. But what we need is the one that connects C1 to C2 and C4. So unfortunately, that's not gonna work for us. Uh, I'm curious what the starter relay is. And they don't show you the, oh, here they show the pins. Okay, this is a five pin relay, but I believe, I think one is normally closed and one is normally open. So again, it's not closing C2 to C1 and C4. It's either connecting it to C1 or to C4, one or the other. So that's not gonna work for us as well. But if you go and see the one that they sell for the hazard warning for TR250 and TR6 through 71, so that's exactly what we need. Look what they sell you. They sell you a modern relay. So mm -mm, we're not gonna do that. Anyways, um, what I'm gonna do is I brought here two diodes and I'm gonna hook them up the way I want it to work, just to be able to test the flasher unit and the dash light and all the four units. And then I'm gonna tell the owner if he wants to find a relay or if he wants to buy this one, I can always install it later, but uh, I'm just gonna make it work without a relay. All right, so here's my contraption here. Inside are the two diodes. One side is connected together and the two are coming out. So now power is going this way and this way, but it doesn't go this way. So it doesn't connect the two circuits at the same time. So now we're gonna connect one of these to my, oh my God, these are too big now. There you go, and we're gonna power them with this wire that comes from the flusher unit. So that's from the switch through the flusher unit into the two light circuits. Okay, this one I'm gonna replace. This one is about to snap anyway, so I'm gonna put a new one here. Now this one light is on, but it's not flashing. So, because probably this one is not on and the rear ones are not on, but you know what? I'm gonna hook up the rear harness now and let's see if something is gonna happen. Okay, they're all on now, but again, still not flashing. So this means that the flasher unit is kaput. So we need a new flasher unit as well, but this we can get electronic one, which also is gonna help us with LED lights and stuff like that. So I'm gonna order one now. I hope it's gonna come soon. And just to confirm, the two circuits are still flashing separately. So the, the right one works. And now that bulb also flashes with both of them because now we connected the rear harness. Oh yeah, the left one is still separate, but if we click the hazard switch like that, now we have both circuits on at the same time. So two diodes that cost probably one tenth of a cent solve a problem that costs you $30 relay which is not obtain them anyway. <laughs> I made it work. I made it work with uh, the other flasher that we had. Remember the car had three flashers for whatever reason. 
So I got rid of this one that is three prong and I used the two prong and these two wires are just like before, the power that comes to the flusher and the power that comes out of it and feeds the two circuits here. The third wire is for the light on the dash and it was hooked up to the third prong. So it was, I'm assuming it was working when this circuit was powered, the light on the dash was not working. And then when the flasher clicks off, then it powers up the dash, but disconnects this. I'm assuming that's how it was. I just hooked them up together now to here and I haven't checked yet. Yeah, that light works as well. So fixed. There's only one signal that it doesn't work. The front one works here. This one probably doesn't have a bulb. So, okay. Okay, what else is on the dash? Oh, and the last thing that we need to test is the horn. So if we shorten, there's a strip in the back that needs to be grounded so I can just shorten it with a screwdriver. <coughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. Horn is working. <laughs> now here is a good time for me to show how the horn works because I had a request. Steve from the UK wanted me to explain how the horn works. So this is it. This is the whole circuit about the horns. So as you can see here, the horns have ground on one side and the other side of both horns is connected to the C1 on the relay. So everything the horns need is C1 to be connected to C2 and this why they're going to be connected to power here on the fuse. How do we make C1 and C2 close? We have to provide power and ground to W1 and W2. So as you can see here, this wire powers C2 and W1 at all times. And all we need now is ground for W2 and that's provided by the horn button on the steering column because it's grounded on one side. So once you close the circuit through the horn button that provides power to W2, that energizes the coil inside the relay, which creates electromagnet and the electromagnet uh, pulls the contact, which closes C1 and C2. That gives power to the horns and the horns are grounded on the other side and that's how they work. So let me show you that in the car. Here is the relay and this is C1 and C2. So like we said, we have constant power on C2 and also with this little bridge, we have constant power on W1. The purple with black in the back is the ground from the horn. So once we provide ground here through the horn button, now we have power and ground on W1 and W2 and C1 and C2 close. And this is the wire that goes to the horns and gives them power and they work. Here under the steering column, you can see the purple with black, which is connected to a little strip behind the steering wheel. And here in this hole, we have this little, I don't know what should we call it, pin which has a spring inside, so it allows it to move a little bit, but it provides a bridge from that little strip inside. And you see it has insulation here. So when you put it, it doesn't touch the steering wheel. And when you put the horn button, this little strip here needs to touch this pin. And because this wire here touches constantly the steering wheel, now it is grounded and inside when you press the button, this and this connect so that's your switch right so when we put it there and now when we press we close the circuit here between ground and purple with black wire and we have <laughs> the horn but there's one very important part here that people sometimes forget the steering column it doesn't have a constant ground because it's connected with these rubber buffers here, one here and on TR4, I believe there's one at the bottom over there. So, so not always we have ground on the steering wheel. For that reason, there's a little piece of wire here. It goes from this side of the boat here through the rubber and connects to the other boat on the other side. And this way we have ground from here to here. 
otherwise this acts as insulator and you don't have ground on the steering wheel so many times this is the problem when the horns don't work the this strip here is either missing or it's cut in the middle also there's uh this ground here that grounds the steering rack because it's mounted with rubber and also might be insulated by the rubber that's why you need this wire here that grounds the steering column and you need this ground strap here to gr to transfer the ground from here to here and then you have ground on the steering column so in general that's how it works Mm, I believe this is the case for all the years. Let's go and check this is for 70 and 71, but let's go to a later year. That's 75 and it's still the same, you see? I hope that's helpful, Steve. Well, I think because now we confirm that everything is working. Well, we haven't tried the ignition switch yet, but I'm, I'm sure it works because I connected it. So I think we're at the point where um, I can now start cleaning the wires, you know what I mean? Because it is a mess now, it looks like a mess, everything is working, but it looks like a mess. So now I can start wrapping the harness and like grouping the wires. For example, these I can uh, just wrap together. So make them one branch, make these ones one branch. All right, so actually before I go and wrap harness, I actually started, but I realized that uh, even though everything under the dash supposedly works, um, I might check all the tail lights, like make sure that everything works, even the front headlights. There we know that only one signal light doesn't work, but that's we can figure out. But I should also make the car um, start and make sure that it charges before I do all the cleaning and wrapping here because uh, if I have to run extra wires or if I have to trace anything else I might need to come back under the dash and so I did so the thing here that I haven't checked before was the wipers because the configuration here hold on so that's ignition on like that yeah that light is on so I played a little bit with it and now it all works. So this is off and now middle position is the wipers first speed, second position is second speed and when you turn it off it goes to park which wasn't doing before. There was only one speed and it was not going to park but there was a wire here that was just hanging. So this works, the pump also works. So this is done and um, the, the tail lights, um, I'm gonna put you on the tripod. So tail lights, these are marker lights. They work, this one works, this one works and this one works. Then uh, brake lights. Do my brake lights work? Both? Yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, brake lights work. Uh, signals. Yeah. Left signal. Right signal. No. No? No right signal? Where did it go? It was working before. <laughs> Right signal is not working for whatever reason. Turn your, uh, turn your running lights off and see if it works with your running lights are off. Uh, no. Still not working. Anyway, let me see the hazards. No. So these are hazards, but that one is not working. Okay, so I have to make that one work, but everything else works. Oh, reverse. Okay, for the reverse, I still don't have the switch on the transmission installed license so plate lamps? Hmm? license plate lamps yeah they work no not anymore apparently uh, because yes yeah, now they work yep. there you go so i just need to fix that signal because i was there there were no bulbs in the reverse lights so i 
played here. I put bulbs and maybe I disturbed the wire there. So I'm gonna go fix that. But other than that, everything works here. All right, in this case, um, I'm gonna deal with the signal light later. I'm just gonna see if the car is gonna start now. Or at least if it is gonna crank. First of all, I'm gonna put the ignition on and see if I have power here to the ignition. Well, yes, I have power, so let's see if it is gonna crank. So let me try and start it then and I want to see if the oil pressure light and the ignition light are going to come off when it starts. She doesn't run great when she is cold so let's see if she's going to even start. But anyway, so neutral. The two lights are the low oil pressure light and the ignition light so let's see if they're going to turn off. too i think there's a huge vacuum leak there I'm just trying for now to not play with way too many things at a time Alright, an hour or so later, we are a little bit more organized here now. You see the wiring is all wrapped, different branches go in different places. I'm still gonna fix it better here, at least in the engine bay, under the dash I'm not gonna go too far. Here the relay underneath is for the horn. This is the part that we modified to bypass the relay, so I'm just gonna put it underneath. We're gonna zip tie it there and uh, nobody's gonna see it. And then we go inside. Here we have lots of improvement. So you can see here the harness. Um, I don't have the patience to wrap it completely, but at least everything is um, put together. All the little branches here. This is the branch for the windshield wipers the branch for the signals and then the other branch in the back all the headlights are here in the back so this is the branch for the headlights here and then from there it goes up so you can see here in the back how it is wrapped there's just one wire that comes this way this is for all the dash illumination for the gauges illumination another branch for the hazards all these lights here this is my ignition switch so that's way too long but i'm not gonna shorten it we're gonna coil it somehow i'm gonna hook it up to the ignition switch in the back and then we have all these wires here that come for these gauges and for the heater fan switch so all these are also divided this is for the rheostat the ammeter, temperature and fuel gauges here, everything is branched. So it looks a little bit better than before, doesn't it? All the wires. So I just need to, oh, and here is where it goes for the rear harness. So I just need to lift it up, hook it somewhere, zip tie it somewhere so it stays and we're gonna be golden, so much better. So this is for my overdrive switch, which we still need to wire. Um, for the stereo and for the overdrive, I'm gonna take power from here. I left this. This is uh, the first position of the ignition switch. You know how you have one position, accessory, I guess, and then you have second position for ignition, and the third position is the cranking. So this is what is live when 
we have the ignition on the accessory position so this is where we're going to take power for the stereo for the overdrive and for the usb and whatever was here and on the other side this is for the backup switch and we need to run the harness for the overdrive switch to the same place and this is all for the stereo so this we're gonna deal with later and this just needs to be hooked up over there on the wall and that's it i'm gonna test it one more time to make sure that everything still works and then we're gonna assemble the dash because like i said the rest of the wiring we can do just by hooking to this little uh, connector there and then we can later we can finish all this mess here but it works like we know and uh, it has extra wires so all the headlights and everything work without this so i don't know what this is but we're gonna continue going that way the trunk i believe we already accept that one uh signal so that's the update for now all right so i believe that's more than enough for this episode um in the next episode we're gonna install the dash again we're gonna test everything if it works as it is by the factory and then uh we're gonna take out the transmission cover and we're gonna wire the switches for the overdrive and we're also gonna install back the stereo and we're gonna hook up everything so the stereo can work as well so i hope you enjoyed this video as well somehow the previous video attracted a lot of attention which was a surprise for me because i thought that many people were going to be bored by all this spaghetti work <laughs> but it uh, attracted lots of attention lots of positive comments on that video so thank you guys so that's going to be it for today thanks for watching commenting subscribing sharing and supporting me on patreon and uh, via paypal also thank you so much guys i appreciate it so I'll see you in the next one. Bye.